Yes. You remember that song, baby? I got a meeting in the ladies' room. I'll be back real soon. Not yet. I mean, I'm, I'm just... Hey, you guys, I just got a few more minutes, and I'm just... You know what I do. I try to tag as many people as I possibly can. Um, okay. Okay, let me go ahead and get you guys tagged in. Hey, Kim! Hold just a moment. Do, 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 do. How are you guys doing tonight? Yes. Give me one. Okay, I'm getting ready to start. I got one more minute. You guys make sure you start a watch party and um, share this with someone who most definitely want, want to be a part of this. Every time I try to um, tag uh, a few more people, okay, I'm finished, you guys. I'm, I, I'll just leave it like this. I, I really am. We're just going to leave it like this. Like, there's nothing else I can do. Who's supposed to be on here will be on here. You feel me? Okay, you guys. Oh, those are the ones, yes. Okay, you guys, how are you? Hold just a second. Let me go ahead and let them know. Hey, everybody on Instagram. How are you? How you doing? Okay. Hey, Yanzo. Hey, Fox Trap Radio. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, you guys. Hey, Paul. How are you? Absolutely. Hey, Arlita. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll go ahead and give a few more time, a little bit more room for them to come in so we can get started because we on time. All right. We on time today, you guys. How are you guys doing? How is everybody doing? How was your Thanksgiving? How much fun did you have with your families? And of course, how much fun did you have eating all that turkey? I know you did. So we have plenty of fun ourselves. I had an amazing Thanksgiving and I'm pretty sure that you guys did too. But guess what, baby? Ladies, uh-uh. Let's do this. It's time to handle your business, okay? It's time to handle your business. I'm about to break this thing down to you, but you know how we do it. If this is your first time to welcome to Women Talk Wednesdays, baby, welcome into our home. We are not at the station doing this. We are in our home doing this. I am chilling at the table talking to you guys and welcoming you in, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for joining me for Women Talk Wednesdays. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here talking to you guys. Um, Women Talk Wednesday has been going on for a few months now, and, and we are still excited, aren't we? So I really appreciate you guys. Make sure that you share this with, with another lady, because y'all know it, it could help somebody else, okay? You know it could. And make sure that you, you have your own watch party. You don't never know what will come out of my mouth. <laughs> But if it's your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome to Wins, uh, Women Talk Wednesdays. I even tell the men, you will be so smart to get on here and hear what we have to say because you'll keep yourself in the game. But hey, listen, let's get started. The last time that we left, and the last week was Thanksgiving, so we had some family time. So I didn't get a chance to come in last um, Wednesday, so we did a recap of um, a show so, but last time that we were here sitting at this table live, we was talking about untying yourself. And of course, y'all know I got a little bit emotional. And I'll explain that a little bit later. But then after we get through getting these comments out of the way, we are going to go right in. Handle your business. Now, I understand some of you don't want to handle your business, but you don't know what I'm talking about exactly. 
and you could assume what I'm talking about, or some of it just sim simply just makes sense. So let me go ahead and go through the comments from uh, the untied, untying yourself. And I hope you young ladies took the time out to just take those knots that you have inside of you and just ask God and go before God and have him help you start untying yourself. So you won't go into another day. I'm not going to talk about another year. You won't go into another day the same. Okay, we're having people tie you all up. So you guys got to go back to that show and listen to it. It was fantastic. And of course, it got very emotional for me. Okay, so here's the comments. Miss JJ, what if you are a woman that really did not know how to untie herself? I have a lot of people that is running my life and it's hard to be untangled. Okay, now I do understand that there are plenty of times where women try to do a lot of pleasing to somebody else, okay? But baby, if you got too many people running your life, then them the wrong people that's supposed to be running your life. You supposed to run your life. You're going to have to try to take some sort of uh, uh, control and not be so, I don't want to say impressive, but be so concerned about what somebody else thinks or what somebody else say. Because one thing I know for sure, people will control your life if you let them. So you cannot let them control your life like that. You're going to have to stand up to your whoever is that's trying to control. It sounds like you have a lot of people in your life. So evidently you have opened up that door that they're comfortable to tell you what to do, how to do. Or you one of those people pleasers that seem like, you know, you want to please everybody. And all I got to say with that is, sister, you don't have to please nobody but God and yourself. So listen, you have to stand up for your own life. Baby, when you dead and gone, they're going to remember you for three days. After that 72 hours, girl. Okay? So you're going to have to start untangling yourself. Even with kids as being a mother, sometimes you be so tied up into your kids and to your spouse. Baby, you are the common denominator to everybody. Make sure you write first. Okay? Make sure you take time for yourself first. And I know it's tough. It's tough when you've been that backbone to everybody. It's tough when you're the one that everybody runs to. It's tough when they always want you. But you, you're so strong for somebody else. But when you need somebody to be strong for you, who is there? There's nobody there, baby, that's going to be strong for you. Because you've been strong for everybody else. And I know that a lot of women can relate to it. You so strong. You the backbone. Everybody call you for everything. But when you need to talk to somebody and you need to call somebody, where they at? Who can you call? Who can you call? Who can you call? Can you call any of those people that have you tied up? I don't want to go back into that sermon because I've already get it, but I'm hoping that this answers your question. Because, baby, it is time to take control of your own life. And understand, when you start taking control of your own life, everybody's not going to like it. Why? Because they were so used to controlling your life. But you got to stand up for yourself now. Enough is enough and too much to thing. Nuh-uh. One life to live, and it's yours. You choose how to live it. If I was you, I start letting people know things is about to change. And even if I don't, my actions will show it. Okay? Stand up for yourself. And I'm not saying it's not, it, you, you don't, you, you can't be strong. Yes, you can be strong. Sister, you can be strong. You can be strong for whoever you want, but when it's time for you to be strong for yourself, you got to be stronger. That's all I got to say on that one. And I love you. You feel me? I'm going to ride with you. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the next comment is, Miss JJ, it was something to see you cry for, um, for us. I shed a few tears with you. Thank you for being so genuine, and I felt your tears, and thank you so much. Okay, let me get through these comments. I know I did get emotional, but let me say this, you guys. I, I, I don't even know how to say it, but I can feel people, okay? And that day, I felt like somebody was in a hole and that, that she was being strangled as far as being hurt. I felt at that particular point in time when I started to cry, I'm being transparent in my, in my heart right here was real heavy. And I felt like somebody could have um, committed suicide because they were so tied up. So I did get emotional 
And that's going to happen sometimes because I got feelings and I got love for you, sisters. And that's just it. And that's all. So, um, but thank you very, very, very much for that comment. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. The last one is, um, Miss JJ, you are a true friend in my head. I appreciate your uh, being so sincere and I do love your knowledge and thank you for sharing with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I want to be a friend. Most definitely. And if it's in your head, baby, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. But let get let's get started with tonight's topic, baby. It's uh it's time to handle your business. What you mean, Miss JJ? It's time to handle your business. Even with a young lady um who has everybody holding on to her, baby, it's time for you to handle your business with yourself. It's time to handle your business for you. Okay? And then everything else will fall into place. Now listen, a lot of you um, well, let me put this disclaimer out first. Okay. Let me, let me make sure I put this disclaimer out. This is going to be a topic between handling your business, which is yourself and handling business, which is business. However, everybody is not designed to be an entrepreneur. Okay. But everybody is designed and should be responsible to handle your own business when it comes to your life. Okay, so it's two things. Now, let me tell you, I get this all the time, so let me just get this out, okay? Being an entrepreneur is not something easy. I'm not going to sit up here and tell y'all, oh, it's so easy. You know, you could be an entrepreneur. No, because handling your business and your life sometimes ain't even easy. I'm just, I'm being real. A lot of you women don't stand up for yourselves. A lot of you don't handle your business. A lot of y'all don't even know what business is. A lot of y'all don't even think you got no business. You do. Guess what your business is? Your life. Your life. That's your business. And you should be careful who you let into your company. Because your life is your business. Now, being an entrepreneur, that is something different. Okay, so let me just say this right off the top. I, I, I have failed many a times in, in, in being an entrepreneur. I know, I know y'all shocked. I have failed. I am an OG of falling and getting back up. I have failed many a times. Okay? Many, 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 many a times. I never want to paint no picture like everything is beautiful. Some people paint that picture. Okay? Some people don't have no struggles. Some people paint the picture that everything was all smooth for them. Well, it wasn't here. Okay? I, I, I fail, y'all. I fail so many times. You feel me? I hit the ground. But one thing about me, I always got back up. People ask me all the time. And I got to tell you because you're going you're gonna to know when I'm talking to you. Okay? They ask me all the time, how did you start that, the radio station, Miss JJ? How did, you, how did you do that? You know what I mean? And some of y'all just think that it's just the radio station, that the business that I have. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. We, we, we got other businesses. But okay, thank you. But baby, guess what? This is going to shock you. At least for the ones who don't know. Baby, I failed. Foxtrap Radio is not my first radio station. I baby, I failed the first time. Foxtrap Radio is not the first radio station that I got. I failed the first one. Okay, this is my, Fox Trap Radio has been in business over almost seven years. This is the second one. Okay, so that tells you if it's a second one, then I must have failed at the first one. So in some of the areas that I failed in, I wasn't mature enough. Some of the areas that I failed in, I didn't understand myself. Sometimes I just jumped into things blindsided. You know what I mean? The blind can't lead the blind. You know, I, I, I was blind. You know, but one thing I could say about myself that I could jump. I never had a problem jumping. That's one thing you should never have a problem in jumping. My mother used to say, nothing beats a fail but a try. Baby, as long as you try, you never failing. But baby, I have fell down many a times. How did I how did I push through to that? How did I push through? I didn't have nobody around me. Let me just be very honest, you guys. 
I thank God for Will. Will's like my partner. Will's my partner. He's been there for, me and Will been together for, for over 10 years. You know what I mean? Everybody will fall on the wayside, but the ones who's supposed to be there with you will be there. Big up to Will Hill on the ones and twos, okay? How did I push through? It was hard. But let me tell you this. I will be very honest. Every business that I started, I didn't have the money to do it. I just thought I should give y'all that moment of silence. Every business that I started, I did not have the money to do it. But what I did have was something that brought me the money. And that was the faith that I had to have it. See, I didn't let situations stop me. Even though I failed, I would not let the situation stop me that I didn't have the money to do it. Because once I made my mind up that it was going to get done, baby, and I had the faith to do it, couldn't nobody tell me it wasn't going to happen. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. It wasn't like I didn't walk into no fear and my stomach shaking. You feel me? And, and I was... I was I couldn't hardly breathe sometimes and I didn't know exactly where money was going to come from or how it was going to be done and so on and so forth. But I had enough faith. I had enough faith and belief that I knew I could do it. And so I jumped. What did you do to jump? I jumped into my faith. I jumped into my belief. Okay. I don't want to do a whole bunch of talking like this. Okay. I, I didn't do a whole bunch of this and run around and telling people because guess what? I didn't know a lot of black women that was on in radio stations. So I could I didn't have nobody to go back and say, okay, well, well, what about this? And what about that? And I had to learn radio from scratch. I had to learn the engineering. I had to learn the softboard. I had to learn the codes. I had to learn the coding. I had to learn that from scratch. I didn't go to school for that, baby. Why are you saying this, Miss JJ? Why are you saying this? I'm telling you that I failed, so I'm telling you that I started businesses that I didn't even have money, to, uh, money for. But what I did have was faith. And when I had faith, those mountains was moving. Okay? Was it always easy for me? It wasn't. So I'm telling you this, that if you got a dream inside of you, if you got a vision inside of you, and you don't know how it's going to happen, handle your business. How do I handle my business, Miss JJ? I don't have the money to do anything. I don't even have nobody that's going to help me, Miss JJ. Handle your business. Your business is already inside of you, baby. God already put your vision inside of you. When he put it inside of you, he didn't ask you, oh, you're going to need, you, 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 I, I put this inside of you right now. So, you know, you, 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 you know, you got to go get the money for it. You know, uh, 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 I ain't doing nothing else. I put it inside of you. And that should be enough. No, baby, I grabbed on to God every time I fell. Because guess what? When I was nine years old, he already put it inside of me that I was going to be a businesswoman. I just didn't know what business it was. But during the process of me not knowing to acknowledge him, okay, and for him to direct me, it cost me, baby. I fell many a times, but I didn't get up. I handled my business with the faith that was inside of me, and I kept moving. You don't... I almost, um, I almost yelled. <laughs> Let me calm down. Let me say it nicely. Your dreams and visions that you have inside of you, boo, they are inside of you for a reason. But a lot of you don't handle your business. One, because you don't know business. Two, because you don't believe that you can do it. Three, because you don't understand what's inside of you. And what happens is, if you try something and you fail... You never try it again. So you ain't handling your business. I'd rather for you to start something, fail at it, which I'm not speaking that over your business. I'm just telling you. But get back up and go do it again. Get back up and go do it again. But see, what happens is, is a lot of you don't even understand what's inside of you. So you jump onto bandwagons and go into companies and businesses that has nothing to do with your purpose. And then you expect it to work. 
And I'm not saying that a lot of it don't work. But baby, it's not no job when you're doing something that you love. That statement is true. It's true. Listen, I didn't do a whole lot of researching when I first, you know, listen, I've already been doing this a while, so I'm just telling you. I didn't, I didn't know to do a whole bunch of researching. Now I will tell you, whatever it is you want to do, have enough faith, handle your business, write it down. What is it you want to do? Write it down. First step. Don't run around going and telling everybody, baby, I think I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to stop this. Oh, I think I'm going to stop this. Who am I going to and, and then go over there and try to get five of your friends to give you an opinion about an idea or a dream you have inside. And since the majority didn't agree with you, you didn't even go do it. Don't do this. If you got one or two people that you can talk to about everything, baby, that's enough. Them silent clients is powerful clients, baby. Okay? Because for some reason, people, people think they should know what you're doing. But the silent clients, you feel me? The silent handling your business. The silent dreams that's inside of you that you're pushing out. You ain't telling everybody. You put God before it and you just run with him. You say, Lord, and you put this in me so you're going to open up the doors and you're going to make provision for me to do it because it's always a purpose that's attached to something else. But when you run around telling everybody your business, you give them enough platform to start tearing it down. And since you are the type of person that listens to other people, it hinders you. I don't care if it's your spouse, your sister, your brother, your auntie, your uncle, your grandma, or Pookie or Poochie, okay? I don't care which one it is. You run and go tell them. They don't even have a mindset to even want something for themselves, and you go tell the wrong people. You go and tell Pookie and Poochie, okay? Mary Lou and Susie Ann. You go and tell them, and they ain't never even had no business. And you want them to tell you something about business because you ain't handling your business? Handle your business this way, baby. Quietly. Because them silent clients right there, boom. And then once you get to the top, you ain't got to worry about nobody been throwing rocks at you trying to knock you down. Only thing they could say is, I didn't know that she had that business. I didn't know that she wanted to do that. Oh, she just didn't tell nobody. Baby, I didn't know she had no book. Oh, she just released a book, girl. No, she didn't. I didn't know nothing about her book. Girl, she getting ready to start a clothing line. Girl, I don't know. What? Girl, she getting ready to get this new job, a promotion. I didn't know that she worked for them. I didn't know she wanted no promotion. For some reason, people think that you should tell them your business. You only allow the information that I tell you. So handle your business. Quit running to people that you think that is going to believe in you. People who ain't had no business or on the job that you on ain't never did your job. And you go run and tell them like they going to help you and give you good information. And then you wonder why it don't work out. Keep your mouth closed. Get you a tight circle. Put God first. Handle your business inside. Open up and say, hey, what's going on, Lord? What is it? Am I going to get this promotion on this job? How do you want me to handle this promotion? Am I going to open up this business? How are you going to provide for me to open up this business? What do I need to know and what do I need to learn? How can I prepare myself for this success? Handle your business. You feel me? Handle your business. Know your position in your own life. Now some of y'all, I'm just saying, you don't handle your business. And some of y'all fearful. Oh, I really, I really do want to do something, Miss JJ. You know, it's been in me. I really want to do something, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I should do it. I, I, I really want to do it though, but I don't know. You're going to be 90 years old still talking about you don't know. Baby, nothing beats a fail but a try. Whatever it is, research it. Get in there. Get before God. Ask him for his direction. Y'all know how my husband and I feel about this. Baby, acknowledge God. 
But guess what happens? I'm going to tell you what happens. A lot of us done it. You can't tell me we have it. You chase the money and not the purpose. Do I, should I drop my pen? You chase the money and not the purpose inside of you. Because that's a temporary fix. See, the money is a temporary fix for you. But the purpose is a lifetime. Eternity purpose that is attached to somebody else. See, when you pass away, you can't leave that job to your kids. Hopefully you leave them life insurance or whatever you're going to leave them. But when you got a purpose inside of you, if it's a true purpose inside of you, you're not going to rest. Now, some of you are, are blessed to be doing your purpose. You're on a job that you love. It's a part of your purpose. You get up every morning. It's not even like a job. Baby, you were designed to be there. Handle your business. Ain't nobody mad at you. You feel me? But it's those ones that's on the job and complaining. It's those ones that be on the job and you so miserable in your own life because you ain't handled your business in your own life that you bring your customer service to us with your bad attitude. Stay home if you don't want to be a customer service type of person. Handle your business and go find your purpose and do something else. Ain't nobody going to hate you for that. Well, I don't got the education, Miss JJ. I don't got the education. I can't do it, Miss JJ. I, I didn't go through this. I didn't graduate. I didn't do this. I don't do that. Baby, that don't mean nothing. Do you think that when God put that purpose in you, okay, it was attached to a degree? Let me drop the pen. Do you think that when God put that purpose in you, something that he knew that you was going to be able to do, do you think that he said, but if, if I give this to you, you're going you gonna to have to do this, this, that, and do this, 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 that. Baby, purposes inside of you become natural. Have you ever been good at something that was just so natural? You're like, oh my God, I did this with no problem. It's natural to me. Some people can sing. Oh, natural. Baby, if I can sing, ha, I would be making money on my, with my voice. I've been blowing it out. The, man, I make a living if, if I can sing. Okay? But they do it so effortlessly. Effortless. Isn't that the right word? Yeah, I'm saying it right. They do it without no problem. It's so natural to them. Okay? Some people do things natural because it's a part of their purpose. You feel me? And so guess what? When you're not in your purpose, have you ever been on the job and you're like, this ain't it? Like even in a relationship. I ain't talking about relationships right now. Move up things to the side. Handle your business over there with them too. But you ever got on something, uh, uh, been on a job, you be like, this ain't it. You been somewhere, you be like, this ain't it. To the point maybe you start to, you know, you dread getting up in the morning. You dread going to the job. You dread hanging around certain people. You feel me? Handle your business. Well, how do I handle my business with that situation, Miss JJ? I got to have a job and got to take care of my family and I need the money. I believe that God didn't put a purpose inside of you so that you can be miserable in it. I believe that God put a purpose inside of you because you are a link that's attached to somebody else's purpose. And then their link gets attached. And then their link gets attached. And their link gets attached. Because it becomes an extended hand of God. So you probably will never be 100% comfortable. When you don't follow your purpose. Or understand your business. But some people. Settle. They'll settle. They'll settle. Well, I can't do it. I can't be, I'm not about to lose my house or none of that stuff for no doggone purpose. And what if you had to stand before God and he asked you about your purpose and did you do what he told you to do and did you do what he put inside you to do? Now get this. That's why I say everybody is not designed to be no entrepreneur. 
okay? I'm not saying you go and start your company. No, no, no. I'm saying find your purpose because if your purpose can be a link, okay? You can just be that one that has God put inside of you to be the best assistant, to be the best supervisor. You feel me? Somebody that will go into a company and make that company a part of them and grow that company because God needs to place people in areas like that too. Everybody's not an entrepreneur, but you are responsible to handle your business for your own life. If you don't do that, you have nothing to complain about. Some people are excellent assistants. Some people are excellent customer service. They are needed. But they have to know if that's their purpose. Some people you can go with customer service and oh my God, you, 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 you want to chip them more. You, you want to talk to them because they, it's like, how you doing? How you doing? And then you got them. Y'all know I'm going to say it. Ugh. Let me put it nicely. I can't do it. You got them ghetto acting customer service people. Hope you're not one of them. Got an attitude, okay? You act like you own the company and you treat people bad when they come through the door. You be, listen, I know y'all been through drive throughs And if you work at a drive through let me tell you how, how you can be owning that restaurant. Customer service, baby. Because if you don't got customer service, then you ain't going to be on that job long. If you're not anointed and your purpose is not customer service, you're dangerous. You don't need to be helping nobody. You, you ain't right. Now, I get it. Some people just don't know. Some people don't understand. I get that. But you cannot say that people are not responsible for their own actions. But so many people are not responsible and don't handle their own lives. And then you want to blame it on somebody else. You got to find your purpose inside of you so you will be able to grow. If your purpose is over here, have you ever been um, went to somebody's company and you felt like, oh my God, if I could move, if they let me change this and this and this, they'll grow more. You were sent by God to make sure that company grows. When you go into places and you make those places better, you, that, that is a purpose. That is an anointing. That is a link. Companies can't run by themselves. I'm serious. I'm telling you what I know. Okay, Miss JJ, back to that um, drive through Listen, I got a problem. Ladies, listen. We need the drive through people. We do. Because without y'all, we can't get our breakfast sandwich. We can't do it. We need y'all. But what we don't need is your attitude. I know this is sidebarring, but I'm just letting you know because I feel like I should let you know. We don't need your attitude. If you don't want to be at the job in the drive through then handle your business and go and find something and research something else and do something else. If you're not good at customer service because that's not the purpose and plan God for you, God got for you, then remove yourself. That's all I got to say on that, on that note. That's all I want to say on that one. I don't think I've been holding that in a while. <laughs> Listen, so many of us run circles around our own self. Baby, we only got one life. It's be it belongs to God and us. One life. One life. And you want to live that life with no regrets. I'm not saying that everybody knows the direction to go. I understand that some people may not just don't know. And since you just don't know, and we've all been there. I've been there sometimes. I'll just sit down and say, Lord, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know which way to go. But what I do know, and that's why I'm so, I, I push this, because this is what me and my husband believes. I'm telling you, you got to acknowledge God. Lord, what is the purpose that you put inside of me? Am I an entrepreneur? 
Or is I supposed to help build companies? Am I supposed to help this person over here? Am I supposed to have a nursery? Am I supposed to have a caretaking business? Am I supposed to am I supposed to build something? You know what I mean? Am I supposed to have a record label? Am I supposed to have a management company? Because what guess what? If you think about it, every last one of those things is going to be attached to somebody else. They're going to need your product or your service. Okay, so how do you start your business, Miss JJ? Especially with organizations. Okay, listen. You want to become a, com a, a company. If you want to start your business, the first thing you need to do is go get you an EIN number. That starts your business. Everything else just puts in place. If you want to be a corporation, you decide which one, if you want a C-Corp or S-Corp, you research what kind of company that you have. You want to be an LLC, you want to have members. Do you want to be the only member? Or do you just want to own your company by yourself? You don't have no investors, no members, or anyone. You just want to be sold. Okay? That's how you start. How do you start your company? You start your company with an EIN number. Employer identification number. That's the first thing. Well, actually, it's after you having faith and you moving towards it, but it's down the first thing of starting it. But you got to get to that point because then the IRS will recognize you as a company. And then once you get to figure out what your secretary of state's office, wherever you at, you feel me? And making sure you research that, that your company's name, nobody else has, ha has it. I mean, I can go through the list of one, two, three, this is what you do. I have no problem in telling you this is what you do. You, but first, you got to get it in your heart. Listen, I'm about to handle my business. Because your business is going to be attached to somebody else's business. Nothing you do is going to be by yourself. Because you're going to need somebody somewhere along the line. And to have an assess, a successful company, you're going to need people that's going to purchase your product and service. But let me tell you this. A lot of us run after the money and not the purpose. It sound good to get into this business because Betty Sue got into it and Betty Sue made a lot of money. So I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to follow Betty Sue. Is that where God sent you to? Betty Sue's? Did the Lord send you there? See, I'm telling you this for a reason. Don't waste no more time doing something that God does not want you to do. Never purpose for you to do it in the first place. Acknowledge him and let him direct you. Acknowledge God and let him direct you. Because when you acknowledge God and let him direct you, you're going to cut off all that running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Should I do this? Should I be this? I'm going to jump in this company. Oh, girl, it sounds good. I'm going to do this company. I'm going to do that company. Girl, they made money in this company. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm telling you this for a reason. Acknowledge God when you want to start your company. When God says, this is what I need you to do. That thing is attached to somebody else. Handle your business by covering your own self first. What is the matter with you covering your own self? What is the matter with you being your first business? Your life is your first business. You should have some policies and some procedures on your business. You should have a payment plan on your life. How are you going to pay yourself? You should have some life insurance, some health insurance. You feel me? You should make sure that your life is your first business. How is this life going to make a profit? How is this life going to be happy? How is God going to cover the things that he put inside of me for this life? I'm just telling you there's areas that you can handle your business. You're going to handle your business as your own life, being your own business. And if you want a business, you got to follow your purpose. Well, I got in this business, Miss JJ, and I don't have no complaints. It made me twenty dollars or $30,000. But was it God's plan for you? Or was it your plan for you? Every time I was trying to get into businesses that didn't... <laughs> Y'all, let me tell y'all, I even got into a wine business one time. You guys probably remember this. I got into a wine business one time, but let me just say this. That was never God's purpose and plan for me to be in a wine business. It just sounded so good. But guess what? I don't even drink. It's not like I couldn't sell, I mean, you know, sell the wine, but it never, it, 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 it never came. Because guess what? I didn't even acknowledge God with the wine business. So all I did was waste money and a little bit of time.
We get into this hustle and bustle that we got to do things and it's got to be a hustle and bustle. We get into this panic mode. That if we don't have this, we don't have that. We're going to take it. I got to take this. I got to do all this. Gotta do. You take it all out of God's hands and you put it into your hands and then you don't even acknowledge him. Then you find yourself into places and, 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 and situations and jobs and, and businesses that are not for you. Your first business is to find out who you are. Second business, when you want your own business, you become an entrepreneur, make sure you do your EIN number first. If you want a nonprofit organization, okay, let me tell y'all this about the nonprofit organizations. Go start your EIN number, okay, for your nonprofit organization, okay? And until you, now the IRS will recognize you as a nonprofit, okay? you just not exempt. Okay, but they can also retro it back. What you have to do is go fill out your application, get approved to be exempt. Okay, you can still run as a nonprofit, but nobody's going to get no in-kind receipt or you're going to have to um, retro it back to the time, you know what I mean, that you did the application and go ahead and move into your organization. A lot of y'all got ideas to have organizations to help other everybody else, but you don't have the application fee. Okay, so you stop right there because you don't got the application fee. What? If God put it inside of you to have a certain organization, baby, go get your EIN number, get your website ready, start setting up yourself, okay? You can still get um, donations. They just won't be exempt. And But you can always come back and give them a receipt in a certain amount of time. Build your organization and keep going. Trust me, God got you. And another thing is with y'all nonprofits, let me drop this because it's on my heart. Now, that don't mean that just because you're a nonprofit, you be running around there asking people for stuff for free. Because nonprofits also get money. Okay? And nonprofits is a business. Because I'm going to tell you, in, in Atlanta, Georgia, all right? I don't know any other state, but in Atlanta, Georgia, these founders of nonprofit organizations, it's like a badge of honor, baby. It's like five degrees mixed up in one. All they got to say is, I am the founder of Dog and Hunt. And baby, that's power. You feel me? I just have to tell you that. But, but don't always ask stuff for free nonprofit organizations. It's, it's for, uh, uh, you know you're going to get paid too. I'll talk about that other, another one. Next thing, another thing is, if you want to start your own company, first thing I would say is start your EIN number. Second thing that I would say before you even go to the Secretary of State's office, I would tell you to make sure that that website that domain name is available for your company because that is a good inkling that that name is available. I ain't going to go through trademarks and everything else, but I will tell you, find out if you're a corporation, you want to be an S corp or C corp. Okay. Research what your company is about. Research what the products you're going to sell. Research the service you're going to give. Okay. You can do it. Don't feel like, oh, I don't, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this, I don't have that. Yes, you do, baby. You can do it one step at a time. You feel me? I'm telling you, some of you guys want to build shelters and so on and so forth. And you don't know which way to go. What's the name of the company? Research your company. Ask God, Lord, what is the name of the company you want me to have? Okay, Lord, I'm telling y'all, you'll save yourself a lot of time if you start asking God and taking God with you on these decisions. Because guess what? You don't know as much as God knows. You need him. Look at my weed flying and everything. Look at it. That's some serious stuff right there. You need God. Let him walk you through it. Let him send you the people. Don't worry about the money. A lot of times, majority of the times, people don't start companies because they don't have the money. Baby, do everything else around it. And stand your position and ask God to continue to lead you and guide you. Handle your business. Handle your business. Quit thinking that you got to do all this and all that. You got it inside of you. First business. Handle your business. If you want to do a business, do a business. If you want to build somebody's business, ask God to help you and to lead you and guide you in that area. Because guess what? Entrepreneurs like me are praying for good people. You feel me? We pray for good people. I got a good prayer. Lord, 
If they're supposed to be around us, let them be. But if they're not supposed to be around us, remove them. I guarantee you, they have always removed themselves. And sometimes it was for the most smallest, stupidest thing. But guess what? They wasn't supposed to be in that circle. So they had to go. You hear me, Cherry? You hear me, Kim? You hear me, Shell? Alita, y'all hear me? I'm going to tell you something. And if you got a, a restaurant, let me, let me, ooh. if you, if you want to, let me give you a secret. If you want a restaurant, make sure that your servers have customer service. Teach them customer service and make sure the food good, but customer service because customer service can make you or break you. I'm telling you, you don't believe me? You can have the worst tasting greens, okay? And you can go and, and somebody can say, listen, you can take this pot of greens, this plate of greens back. And your customer service be like, I'm sorry, mister. I'm so, I apologize you didn't like them. Oh, other people said they love them, but that's okay because everybody's taste is different. Is there anything I can get you? Is there anything else? Come on now, y'all be like, well, no, not really, but thank you. Customer service. Just telling y'all. Y'all need to have customer service when it comes to your own life. Some of y'all don't even treat yourselves right. I'm just telling you to handle your business. Handle your life. Whatever's inside of you, ask God which direction you should go. Do not leave the true CEO out of your decisions. I'm telling you. I'm telling you something that I know. Every time I left God out of the decision, I had to learn the hard way. Now I don't be trying to move without God. Every time I try to make a wrong decision, or, 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 every time, and I, I went on my emotions and it was really high and I was feeling good about it and, and I was like, whoo, whoo, yeah, I think it's gonna work. Yeah, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't acknowledge God. And I get in it and five minutes later I'll be like, hmm. I don't know. I don't think this going to work. I don't like this. You feel me? So did I acknowledge God with the radio station? Yes. Did I start that radio station with a lot of money? No. I start that relationship with God and faith. Everybody else thought I was crazy. They didn't think I was very smart at all. Okay? But that's okay. I took God. Was it easy? No. Was it smooth? No. Just because God told me to go in that direction, he made provision for it. But it wasn't like always smooth. I think, be, uh, listen, when we acknowledge God, let me get this understanding. When we acknowledge God and he direct us, it don't mean that everything is going to be smooth. You're just going to have peace and you'll keep going. Because even through this COVID, when God leads you to what he wants you to do, he has to provide for it. Well, I started a business and it didn't work. Did you acknowledge God? That's all I got to say. That's the first thing of business. You have to acknowledge him. I'm serious. I do, listen, my husband and I, uh, listen, if, if y it gets on y'all nerves because I be talking about my husband all the time, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> but we acknowledge God in absolutely every decision. Start your business now. Handle your business in your life. Find out what's inside of you. Ask God what is the purpose. Some of us just did not know. Genuinely just did not know. But you have a purpose. God gave it to you. When you were in your mother's womb, he already knew what you were going to be. Don't be afraid because you don't have this degree. You don't have this money. You don't got this going on. You don't got that going on. Listen, anybody ask you all that. Okay? 
It's like you're running around trying to figure things out and you're not even going to the one who created it all. It's common sense, baby. You got something inside of you, you go to God and say, what is this? You can't go to Mookie and Pookie and Shaniqua and, and Tammy and Mary Sue and, and all them. You can't go to all of them and ask them for, about something that God put inside of you. And when you do that, you just go around a long old circle taking advice from folks that don't even know nothing. Go and ask God, what is it that you put into me? Handle your business. It's already in you. Handle your business. It's already in you. Handle your business. It's already in you. The crazy thing about it is, it's not going nowhere. The purpose inside of you, either you're going to live with it, or you're going to die with it. But it's not going nowhere. Handle your business. Handle it. Go before God and ask him, what is it? Because it's attached to somebody else. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. It's attached to somebody else. Handle your business. If you're getting a promotion on a job, handle your business. If you're supposed to be in customer service, handle your business. If you're supposed to open up a restaurant, handle your business. Well, I got to have me a bigger kitchen to cook. Baby, you better use them four burners in your kitchen. You better start somewhere. Handle your business. Girl, I want to open up the store, but I don't know. I don't have the money for the building. Baby, set you up a table at the flea market or the discount mall or wherever you at. Set your table up on a corner, baby, and sell your products after you get a permit. Well, I did want to go into a clothing business, but I don't know. You better research the clothing business, the clothing line. Make sure you go in and, and look at the trademarks and make sure ain't nobody else got it, baby. And if that's what God put in you, you better roll with it. Because I, listen, some things is getting ready. Let me be 100% real with you. Some things is getting ready to happen into this world and you got to trust God or you don't. Know. Whatever God put inside of you, you either going to trust it or you not. You either going to live for that purpose and pull it out of you or you going to lay in that grave six feet under and die with it. And there's a lot of people in the cemetery that didn't even achieve anything regarding their purposes. They're lying. That's the most blessed place in this country, in this world, is the cemetery. Because a lot of dreams and a lot of purposes and a lot of plans and a lot of visions died with them because they was afraid to do it. They was afraid to move. They didn't have enough money. They got to take care of this. They was this. They was that. They was this. And God put it inside of them. I'm just telling you, live with it. Handle your business. Whichever way you're going to do it, handle your business. I'm telling you, it's already there. I don't care what y'all say. Every time I go by a cemetery, I used to turn my head. I see all them headstones. And you can't tell me that ain't nobody laying in that cemetery that could have been just like us that did not want to try. That die with regrets. That did not take the purpose that God put in them. Even though they were yearning all those years. But they came up with excuse after an excuse after an excuse after situation after situation. And stopped them from living. And stopped them from their purpose and plan God had for them. And now they're gone. Don't you be that. Baby, you better use your purpose and live and try and than to die with regrets because you didn't even try to go to God and ask him what it was. I'm telling you what I know, not what I heard. You better get your, your business right and handle it. That's all I got to say. And then when you do have your business, please, customer service, please. 
try to run your business as professional as possible so people will want to come back to your business. There is a stigma on black folks' business that black people are not professional in their business. If you are black on this, li on this live right now and you have a business, I pray that you are doing your business professional. Okay? Because nobody's going to come to your business if your customer service is not right and you got attitude. Nobody's going to do that. Handle your business. You got to have some quality about your life. You got to have some quality about yourself. You got to have some quality about your business. You got to know the quality in your purpose. It's real, baby. I didn't have nobody to tell me this. It's real. It was me, God, and the whole, it was God, me, let, let me, well, let me put it in the order. It was God, the Holy Spirit, and me. And then I prayed, and now God has blessed me with amazing people around me, including my wonderful, amazing husband, partner, and Will Hill. Because that's how God does it. You don't need a whole bunch of people, but just handle your business. So, check your life. Handle your business. Check it. Handle your business. Quit giving yourself excuses. If you don't want nothing out of life, then fine. That's you. But handle your business. That's all I got to say on that. So, listen. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all coming over here. Hey, Tony. I appreciate you guys coming and listening to me just on Wednesdays. Listen. I don't mind talking. As a matter of fact, I just don't mind it at all. But I want to thank you. Hey, listen, I hope you got something out of this today. You can always email me your comments at jjfoxhatch at gmail.com. You can always send me your comments. I read them all. Make sure that you pass this on to somebody else because if it wasn't a blessing for you, it may be a blessing for someone else. But baby, it's time to handle your business, okay? It's time to trust in God and it's time to move and take responsibility for your own business, your own company, which is your own life. If you got to do some restructuring, baby, do it. And come out bigger and better than you've ever done before. Because that's how good God is. He's that good. Listen. Y'all know I've been walking Monday, I mean Tuesday through Friday. Okay. I walk early in the mornings. I want to thank everyone that's on here and also been supporting me while I'm walking as the walking club. I appreciate it. I really do. I got to handle my business with you. I want to thank everybody that tunes in on, Win on Women Talk Wednesday. I got to handle my business with you. Thank you so very much. Everyone that listened to the J.J. Fox Show, Fox Trap Radio TV, thank you very much. Every last one of us at Fox Trap Radio, thank you and appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your time, Kim. I appreciate your time. Let me handle my business with you and say thank you. Thank you to each and every last one of you. I believe in you. I know you can make it. God has a plan for you. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. He has a plan. He does. Let me pray. I'm excited. Why? I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you and I'm excited for you. Because I know that you're about to handle your business. And that just makes me so happy because I love seeing people happy and I, I love to see people achieve greatness. So anyway, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just give you praise. We just give you glory. We just give you honor. Father God, we thank you and praise you, Father God, for what you've already put inside of each and every last one of us. Father God, help absolutely everyone who's listening to the sounds of my voice, that you help them to find out their plan and purpose. It's never too late, Lord. As long as they are breathing, Father God, in Jesus' name, they have an, a, an opportunity, Father God, to understand and to receive the plan that you have for them. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, whatever it is in them that is preventing them from moving forth and handling their business, Father God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are opening up their minds, you are 
opening up their door and you are setting up people in places that can assist them to the next step, Father God. But Father God, I thank you that they take the first step, recognizing who you are, acknowledging you as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and move it into their purpose, Father God. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I promise you I do. I love you guys and you guys have an amazing night and I'll see you guys later. God bless you guys. Handle your business.